Hello, good evening, and welcome to Minster, where tonight on WOSN we'll bring you a first-round playoff matchup between the visiting Fort Recovery Indians and the homestanding Minster Wildcats. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside John Zerby. We'll bring you all the action tonight here from Minster. And, John, uh, these two teams met in week four of the football season. Minster got the victory, but a lot of things have changed since then. Yeah, and they know each other very well, Garrett, with that, that week four matchup with uh, Minster coming out on top. But anytime you play a team twice, you typically have some wrinkles or different things that they're going to do. And I think these teams know each other well enough to, to match up well in this second round or this second game of the year, first round of the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see how this uh, ends up tonight. Yeah, we're looking forward to a good matchup up here between the 6th seed and the 11th seed in the Division 7 Region 28 playoffs. And, John, time to take a look at the keys to the game. Now, what stands out to you for both sides to, to grab a victory tonight? Yeah, let's first look at Fort Recovery, Garrett. And they really need to play great defense tonight. Defensively, 11 of their guys, all 11 guys need to do their jobs. They, they really, um, you know that Minster has some firepower with uh, with their quarterback, Steffi, and, and their receivers. So any breakdown is going to mean an explosive play for Minster. So playing great defense is always taking care of the football. The turnovers really hurt them in the, in the first meeting. And so they really want to make sure that they uh, keep those uh, turnovers um, clean tonight. And then obviously taking advantage of matchups on the outside. They feel like they have an opportunity to throw the ball, um, not only uh, deep, but across the middle and uh, on the flats as well. So uh, really looking forward to those matchups on the outside. Yeah, Troy Holman, uh, just a sophomore, but uh, first team all Mac performer for the Fort Recovery Indians, which you don't see too often in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Well, no, and it's such as a sophomore, and it's tough to make first, second, third team anywhere in, in this <laughs> league especially. So those matchups are going to be really a telltale sign for tonight. And for Minster and Seth Whiting's squad, what stands out for the Wildcats? Well, I think for tonight, you know, they it sounds crazy, but they got to score points. They give up. They score 30 points a game, but they give up 24. So they got to outscore Fort Recovery tonight. I really think they need to spread the ball around on offense. You know, a, a broken step, he's going to he's gonna get his carries, he's going to get his throws. But with his receivers, Niemeyer, Webker, and, and Kaus, he really needs to get the, the ball out in those guys' hands and let them um, uh, do their thing. And then finally, don't overlook Fort Recovery. Yep. You played him in week four. You had a 20-point win. But, you know, you just have to be prepared to play tonight. you got to be sound up front, sound in coverage, and play physical. And if they do that, th that tonight, they have a great chance of winning. They played in week four. A lot's changed since then. And we'll come back with first quarter action. It's first round playoff action between Fort Recovery and Minster. And it's next right here on WOSN. Welcome back to Minster, where we're getting set for this first round playoff matchup between the Fort Recovery Indians and the Minster Wildcats. And, uh, Minster won the, or excuse me, Fort Recovery won the toss, elected to defer Fort Recovery 3-7 and seven on the season. Of course, head coach Brent Niekamp, and then uh, averaging just under 17 points a game, giving up just under 30 points a game, and uh, an average margin victory uh, less than 12 points. And then Seth Whiting in his second season leading the Wildcats to their uh, first playoff appearance since 2020. Just over 27 points, just over 25 points given up that we mentioned in that pregame, and of course they played a little more than six weeks ago, and Minster won 41 to 21. So the Indians will kick off to the Minster Wildcats. Now we're turning it out to the 30-yard line, out to the 35. That's Connor Schmeezing, to where's number 10 at home. And he brings it out to about the 40-yard line, so the Wildcats could have pretty good starting field position. Yeah, really good start there uh, on the opening kickoff. Connor Schmiesen getting a good uh, stop there. And, uh, you know, as we look at this uh, this matchup, you know, uh, this first number six, Minster, and 11 Fort Recovery, this region, Garrett, is tough. I mean, you look at Fort Loramie, you look at Mechanicsburg, um, this is going to be uh, whoever gets out of this game tonight is going to have a battle ahead of them. That they are as the Wildcats get set up with five wide receivers. Brogan Steffi by his lonesome. He'll throw quickly to Schmeezing, or excuse me, Niemeyer. Chase Kaus actually with the reception there for Minster. He had 20 receptions coming into tonight. Gets a big game there on first down on the first play for yeah, Minster. Yeah, first play is just a little tunnel screen, and uh, Chase Kaus gets out there and 5'9", 130. He can fly. Okay? Yeah, he can. Yeah, so a nice pickup on first down. So a good first play there for the Wildcats is Steffi, the 6'1", 165-pound sophomore, will be lined up in the backfield, schmeezing to his right with a pair of wings lined up to each side. And now Steffi going to keep it himself on first and 10. He's got room to run. Brought down from behind. The Wildcats 
pick up another nice chunk of yards here on first and ten. Yeah, it looks like Riggs Toby there was able to bring Steffi down on defense, but uh, even formationally, kind of an interesting formation. They yeah. went uh, two tight ends off the line of scrimmage, and they weren't they weren't trying to hide anything. Garrett just ran Steffi straight ahead. So second and three, upcoming here for the Wildcats as they'll send three receivers to the bottom of your screen. And Connor Schmeezing lined up behind Steph, and we got a penalty flag. Now they'll pick it back up. <laughs> so <laughs> get the first down there is the carry by Schmeezing. Might have been a fumble on the official there, you know, just uh, dropping his flag. But yep. uh, <laughs> you can see him say, nope, nope, never mind, nope. sorry, that was my bad. So another first down for the Wildcats. You know, you look at their their lineup, especially receivers. Uh, you know, they're not real big. You have a couple of receivers that are, uh, you know, 150 pounds and then 130 pounders. And but they're, right now, they're really uh, they're really doing a nice job of uh, getting movement and getting yardage. So two first downs after the first three plays here for the Wildcats. As Steffi lines up in a pistol with Schmeezing behind him once again, a wing and two receivers to that right side, and Schmeezing will hand to take the handoff and another about seven yard gain there for Connor Schmeezing. Yeah, he's kind of getting in a rhythm, coming from that opening kickoff and, and getting yards, and, and now you're getting a lead blocker here and uh, getting yards. What a nice uh, first uh, first down gain. So a couple of consecutive carries here for Connor Schmeezing has the Wildcats knocking on the red zone's door. Second and four. The Steffi play action. Slings it out here to Devin Webker. Webker's got the first down and more inside the 10-yard line, down near the 5-yard line, carrying some Indian defenders, but a nice carry after the catch by Devin Webker. Yeah, those yards after contact are huge, and I like what Minster's doing, just the real quick passing game. Nothing really look, you know, nothing downfield, just trying to get the ball out and quick to their playmakers, and it's been productive for them. So it's first and goal here for the Wildcats, the first possession of the game. And Steffi will line back up on the shotgun with Schmeezing to his left. Well, Nelson James Niemeyer, the first team all Midwest Athletic Conference. Wide receiver out wide to the right. And Steffi will keep it himself on first and goal. And Brogan Steffi is into the end zone from six yards out for the first score of the night for the Minster Wildcats. I don't think you could uh, plan that any better for Minster. From the opening kickoff to the first drive, uh, everything went the way that they had it planned. And one of the things I like to see is uh, they brought Will Fremel in at fullback. They've had him in the last several plays just to kind of uh, kick out the ends and, and lead inside. And, and uh, Brophy just did a great job of, uh, uh, Brogan Steffi, excuse me, just did a really nice job of uh, following his lead blockers. Steffi also the extra point kicker for the Wildcats. As the snap is back, the hold is down, the kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights and good. And Minster's on the board first with a six-play, 60-yard touchdown drive. Has them on top 7-0 here on WOSN. Minster with the early 7-0 advantage after the six-play, 60-yard touchdown drive there and a couple of first downs quickly, John. And, and you mentioned it, you probably can't draw that up any better if you're a Wildcat fan. <laughs> no, that was a great for start. And, you know, Having that win early in the season, you're kind of interested to see how Fort Recovery is going to come out and adjust. And I'm sure they made adjustments. It just maybe wasn't the right adjustments. So the short kick going to be grabbed at the 25-yard line out to the 35-yard line as I believe Luke Atchison returns the football for the Indians. And that's relatively pretty good starting field position for Fort Recovery. Yeah, really good starting field position. And I'm not uh, – that wasn't your typical kickoff return. He just kind of grabbed it and made sure he kept his hands on it, but a really good start for court, court recovery here. So the Wild, or excuse me, the Indians will send their offense out to the field. Kale Ramble, the 6'5", 225-pound senior, will trigger things offensively. He's got 10 touchdown passes and eight touchdown runs. And Troy Holman, a junior, uh, who we mentioned in the pregame show, uh, first team all wide first team all Midwest Athletic Conference wide receiver, and he's lined up in the slot to the top of your screen. But before we get going, You've got a penalty flag thrown. It looks like the Minster's going to be on the, in the neutral zone there, and uh, they're going to get him before the, the first play. They're a little bit antsy to get out on defense and make something happen. So an easy five yards to start the drive there for the Indians. So first and goal, for, for not first and goal, first and five for Fort Recovery is Ramel in the gun. 
Looking to throw on the first play for the Indians. Looking to go deep. Has a man down the middle. He's wide open. It's Holman. He's able to keep his feet. Has one man to beat. And Troy Holman has a 65-yard touchdown on the first play for the Indians. You know, we talk about Minster drawing things up and, and it going the way they wanted it to go. I think Fort Recovery just had exactly the start that they wanted. Uh, not only get any penalty on the first play of the game, but this play here, uh, great uh, uh, play calling. You see us the, the, the post route right across the middle of the field. And what a fantastic catch there. Um, and getting out there and not only uh, getting out and Troy Holman getting that catch, but then breaking the tackle at the end to put uh, Fort Recovery uh, in position to tie this game. Yeah, he had to stretch just a little bit to grab that football and then able to regain his balance. Uh, fine athleticism on display there by Holman, and it looks like the Indians going to line up to go for two. Well, and they're not going <laughs> to they're, they're hold back here. They're going to go for it and see what they can get. Rammel. Fakes the handoff, will roll, has Holman wide open, and he's grabbed it, and it's a two-point conversion, so Fort Recovery on top, 8-7 to seven after just two offensive plays. Well, Garrett, if this is, uh, you know, kind of a, a what we're going to see the entire night, we're in for a good game because this has uh, been some fireworks so far. I won't complain about it if you won't. <laughs> uh, I, I marked down the scoring on my sheet that, you know, it was going to be a 7 at the start. Well, it's not. It's 8-7 for recovery here in the first quarter on WLSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics as the Fort Recovery Indians have an 8-7 advantage over Minster. Great look here from our WLSN crew with the Fantastic sunset, beautiful views here at Memorial Field here in Minster, and I'm sure it's a beautiful view for the folks on the visiting sidelines at the scoreboard as they lead 8-7. Yeah, man, it's it's just been a great start for both these guys, and probably both defensive coordinators are kind of scratching their heads right now. Botin kicks it away, ball's loose, ball's still loose, and finally goes into the paws of a Minster Wildcat, but... Uh, quite the start of this <laughs> game here, John. We've we've seen a little bit of everything. You know, and I kind of thought, well, this is the second time they've played, and you know, what, what are we going to see anything different? Well, we've seen some fun stuff so far. Got balls bouncing all over the place. <laughs> got big plays. It's been a fun first, not even three and a half minutes of this football game. Well, and I think that's the the fun thing about you know playing a team that you do know well. All those secrets, uh, as far as schemes and things like that. They're out the window, you know, so now it's just really going to come down to execution. So Staffy will line back up in his shotgun. Tied into the bottom of your screen. Counter schmeezing the handoff. Tries to make a couple of guys miss. Able to get out to the 40-yard line before he's cut down. Reese Wendell in on the stop for Fort Recovery. But again, Minster averaging just 3.4 yards per carry coming into tonight. They've got to be at eight here in this first quarter. And they have... They've, they've in the game plan has said we're, we're going to run the ball. We're going to establish our running game. We're going to establish our screen game. You'd have to think at some point they're going to set something up to throw deep, but they've made a point to run the ball tonight. Well, and Minster head coach Seth Whiting told us, hey, we got to be physical. Uh, if we're going to make a run here in the playoffs, we're going to have to play that brand of football, and they've showed that here in the opening stanza as Brogan Steffi gets across midfield out to the 45-yard line, another first down scamper by the sophomore signal caller. Yeah, he's got a bright future. I mean, all the things that he can do. I, I really like the way he runs the football. Uh, he, he's he's six foot uh, one, but he runs low to the ground, and I like how he protects the football as well. But like we said earlier, they are setting the tone, wanting to be physical, wanting to show that this running game is going to be the uh, key component early. So that nose of the football line at the 45-yard line as the Wildcats get back in the pistol. Schmeezing lined up behind Steffi. And he'll hand off to Schmeezing once again. Has to reverse field. Makes a couple of guys miss out to the 40 before he's swallowed up. But very close to another first down carry. There was Bo Tin on the stop for Fort Recovery. Yeah, they just uh, pulled, uh, looks like they pulled one of the, their guard, and then they had their fullback there coming through. Um, uh, Will Frimmel once again uh, making nice blocks and, and really creating gaps there for Schmeezing to get yards. So second and two upcoming here for the Wildcats. Yes. Steffi with Schmeezing to his left. Will turn and fire quickly, looking for James Niemeyer, his first catch of the night. And the first team All-Mac performer makes one man miss, a penalty flag thrown, but he's inside the red zone if that call stands. Yeah, bubble screen, quick screen, just getting uh, the ball out in space, trying to get it to Niemeyer. 
Another sophomore out on the field for Minster. And uh, it looks like it is going to be on Minster, maybe a hold there in the, in the, in the secondary. Yeah, you see number three there, Devin Webker, maybe holding on for just a hair too long. And that will bring the play back. But it's pretty much right back to the line of scrimmage. And that's tough because, you know, when the line's blocking, they're kind of hidden by each other. You know, the officials are watching maybe one or two guys, but when you're out in the open like that and that, uh, that official standing right there, it's, it's hard to, to make a great block without, without holding. So instead of second and three, it's going to be about second and five. As the Wildcats come back out, scored in six plays on their last drive. Steffi with Frimmel lined up as the wing. Will keep, the, keep it himself very close to a first down. Might be about a half yard shy. It'll be third and short up coming here for the Wildcats. Yeah, and this is, uh, this is like you said earlier, that was a big play before, but they had such a good uh, starting position there on first. They got such good yards on first down that really the penalty did not hurt them too much. It gets them in a, a really good third down position now. Well, and building the momentum here has been important in this first quarter for Minster where, you know, they, they won five straight during the middle of their regular season, and then they lost their last two to end the regular season. And uh, the, some question marks of, you know, how, how good are we? And you want to feel that out here. And I think this first quarter offensively has gone pretty well. It's gone really well. And I think that they've set the tone by saying, we're going to run the ball, we're going to be physical, and this is what we need to do to win, not only win tonight, but uh, in the next several weeks as well. And, you know, you look at those last two games that they did uh, uh, lose games to, Garrett. They lost to Versailles and New Bremen, not too shabby of teams that they, they lost to. Not at all. Steffi gets the first down carry, keeping it, keeping it himself as the clock continues to tick here with 5.40 to go in this first quarter where uh, Broken Steffi has a couple of first down carries here in this first quarter. Yeah, and, and a lot of, uh, I would say possession-wise, obviously it's going to, Minster's really chewed up the clock. I mean, yeah. Fort Recovery's basically ran one play, um, but they've really uh, kept uh, their defense off the field. Schmeezing, the deep set back as Frimmel goes in motion. Schmeezing a carry and a big Nearly tackle for loss for Fort Recovery. As number 56, who we don't have on our roster. But he gobbled him up high and just lost that grip, but uh, broke right through the line, did number 56. Yeah, I think that's both in who's playing defensive tackle. He maybe started the season out with uh, number 52. Well, so, and yeah, both tens right. He, He's number 52. So there's a 52 and a 56 on the on the field. I'm not sure. They told us the starting um, defensive end would be Austin Steinbrunner and Connor Kai Kai Kala. Kai Kala. As Steffi's got plenty of time to throw. Got a man deep. It's Niemeyer, and he's into the end zone for a 34-yard touchdown strike. Well, that will get the Minster faithful excited because you're going to see this route. They're they're running two high safeties. And Niemeyer runs a post right past the, 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 the both safeties. You can see a perfect throw by Brogan Steffi and really a, a bounce, an answer to Fort Recovery's first touchdown. So an easy pitch and catch from Steffi to Niemeyer. That is Niemeyer's fifth touchdown catch of the season. And it's 13 to 8 now on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. So Minster. Will kick the extra point. It's up and good. And Minster leads 14 to 8 over the Fort Recovery Indians here on WOSN. Back to back touchdown drive for the Minster Wildcats has them on top 14 to 8. That one, a seven play, 68 yard touchdown, capped off by the 34 yard touchdown strike from Brogan Steffi. James Niemeyer, a pair of first-team All-Midwest Athletic Conference performers as sophomores for the Minster Wildcats. The future is bright here for the, for the black and orange, John. Well, they had that, that season last year that, you know, there was a struggle, but there was a lot of young guys playing. And you've been hearing a lot. You know, I talk to people and they say, watch out for Minster. These sophomores are going to have a bright future. A high short kick grabbed by Atchison once again at the 20-yard line. Spins out of a tackle, but he's driven straight to the turf. Gabe Barhorst on a stop for the Wildcats. So a little uh, momentum play again there in the open field for Minster. 
Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, these offenses have been dynamic so far with these uh, these big plays. Uh, mister has been obviously more ground and pound, but the, but the both big plays there for touchdowns have been have been exciting. So it's going to see, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if these defenses can start to settle down a little bit. So Fort Recovery going to run their second offensive play of the night with 424 to go here in this first quarter after they scored on the touchdown on the first play of their offensive try. As Rammel will turn and hand off to Ethan Hartnagel. Hartnagel churns those legs out to the 29-yard line. So a gain of four on first down for Hartnagel. Yeah, and I'll tell you, we've you know we've obviously watched a lot of MAC teams play this year, and from top to middle to lower part of the MAC, there's just not a ton of difference. I mean, these are athletic kids that play hard, they get after it, and you can see the intensity out there. Yeah, anybody can beat anybody, and anybody can can lose to anybody, as well as the three and seven Indians here in the playoffs, taking on the six and four Wildcats. Ramble in the gun, Hart Nagel to his right, back to pass, looking to fire once again. It's intercepted by Niemeyer, undercuts the route, grabs it at the 40 yard line with room to run on the return into the red zone, and he's going to be spun out of bounds by Ramble. But that's a big play there by the Minster Wildcats. Yeah, it's uh, James Niemeyer just did a great job. At that's the same play that they ran for a touchdown. They just ran it on the opposite side of the field, and, and he was not fooled that time. You can see him reading the quarterback's eyes, and the ball was a little bit underthrown, and he does just a really good job of stepping in front and making a big pick for the Wildcats. So he takes it down to the 18-yard line. Minster plus 12 on the season coming into tonight in the turnover margin, while Fort Recovery minus 12, and each one adds a tally there. But... The Wildcats already in business as they'll set up shop at the 18-yard line, ready to start their third offensive drive. Steffi will send Niemeyer in motion. He'll turn, fake the handoff. Steffi keeps it himself. Now has a man wide open. It's Devin Webker in the front corner of the end zone. It's Steffi's second touchdown pass of the night from 18 yards out, and it's another Minster touchdown. I'll tell you, Garrett, that was a beautiful play. There's, there's a flag on it, so unfortunately it's going to be called back, but I don't think that play went the way it was designed because it looked like a double reverse option. Yeah, you, and then I was going to say, it looked like, you, okay, we're going to fake the fake the jet sweep behind them, we're going to fake the inside reverse, then we're going to run the option to the outside. Oh, by the way, there's a wide receiver standing by his lonesome down there, and I think an offensive lineman might have got caught watching there and meander downfield just a hair. Well, I think we all were watching. You know, <laughs> there's like five or six options on this play. And the the... The one that they ended up with, I don't know, was an option as much as uh, as much as Devin Webker was just standing there by himself I going, think, hey, yeah, hey, hey, I'm open, you know. Well, that just kind of shows you what kind of athleticism Broken Steffi has yeah. to just have that awareness to, to kind of take a play that maybe wasn't designed to go that way and make something of it. So the touchdown comes off the board. It's still 14-8. They'll send Fremble in motion from right to left, and Steffi will keep it himself. Steffi. Brought down at the 21-yard line as Jose Martinez in on the stop. His first uh, tackle of the evening for Fort Recovery. Yeah, and Fort Recovery, they're, they're, you know, where, where they're going to have to start making some noise is on that defensive line. You know, uh, Minster's coming out with, with full aggression right now. And so it's, it's going to be it's going to be one of those things that they're going to have to punch back here on the defensive line to get themselves in position to stay in this game. Less than three minutes to go here in this first quarter. Wildcats looking to punch one in from 20 yards out. Steffi will be by his lonesome in the shotgun. Four wide receivers to the right of your screen. And Steffi will roll that way. Looking, fires. It's caught by Chase Kaus, and he dives into the end zone. A 20-yard pitch and catch from Brogan Steffi to Chase Kaus. And the Minster Wildcats punch another one in. The second touchdown pass from Steffi on the evening. Oh, uh, this is just the an inside route that he that he, he releases outside. And watch Chase Kaus on this last uh, play here. All 130 pounds <laughs> knocking guys down to fall into the end zone. He's an exciting player. So Kaus gets the touchdown grab. His second of the season. They make it 20 to 8. Two thirty-six to go here in this first quarter. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And Minster holds a 21-8 advantage over the Fort Recovery Indians here on WOSF. 
The Minster Wildcats rolling here to start the, tonight's first round playoff matchup. They lead 21 to eight. As Minster has the football teed up, ready to kick it away. And a ball is loose, scooped up by the Indians. As number 32 for Fort Recovery. And that's Reese Wendell on the return there for the Indians, having to evade a couple of Minster Wildcats, but got it out as far as he could, but going to be stopped at about the 30-yard line. Well, I'll tell you, in a short amount of time, we've had a lot of, a lot of cool things happen out on the field. I mean, at this rate, Garrett, uh, you and I won't get to the local fast food uh, establishment on time after the game because we may be here late, you know. Uh, and hopefully it's still open. Uh, we can see it from the window here. They calling our names is Cale Rammel. <laughs> Play action. Has plenty of time to stand and fire. And he's got Holman for another reception. And he gets it just past the 45-yard line. That's a nice pitch and catch here by Troy Holman. Yeah, and, and I really give Coach Niekamp a, a lot of props on calling a play to uh, get his quarterback uh, settled. And uh, he did a – Atchison did a really – or excuse me, uh, Cole Ramble did a – Cale Ramble did a really nice job of just – after that pick on the last, uh, last possession, coming back out and being aggressive and completing a nice pass to Holman. Yeah, nothing says, hey, I've got, I, I've got faith in you like – he threw an interception last time. We're going to go gonna throw it the very first play of the next drive. As Ramble will hand off to Hartnagel. Hartnagel met in the hole and shoved backwards by a whole host of Minster Wildcats there. As Will Kanapke, the initial Wildcat on the stop. Yeah, I like how Will Kanapke plays from that uh, that linebacker position. He uh, He's just a sophomore, like the feels like the entire Minster team, but comes up and makes a really good stop. and. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put Fort Recovery in a second and long now. A gain of two makes it second and eight as the clock goes under two minutes to play here in this opening quarter. Three wide receivers will move to the top of your screen. Rammel in the gun once again with Hartnagel to his right. Rammel again has time to throw. Is flushed from the pocket and then is brought down Brady Wolf on the sack. His third and a half of the season. He tallies another one there. Get a great look at the replay where Ramble had time to throw there, John, but I can only stand back there so long. Well, one of the things that Brady Wolf did a really good job of is that, you know, as a, as a defensive end, you're coming and you don't want to you don't want to over pursue. And what he did is he kept his feet under him. And as Ramble tried to step up in the pocket, Brady Wolf folded underneath and it allowed him to make a really big sack and really put his defense in a great spot. So third and 15 now for the Indians. Under a minute to go, you were in this quarter. Ramel looking for the screen. It's caught by Reese Guggenbiller. Guggenbiller back to the line of scrimmage, but not much farther. Got to the 46 yard line, a gain of six, will bring up fourth and long. And that's a scouting thing because Minster only brought two defenders uh, on their rush. So they knew that in these third and long situations, there's going to be some kind of tunnel screen or some kind of screen to the outside and they were well prepared. So Ramel, who's also doubling as the putter for the Indians is back deep to punt. Chase Kaus will return for the Wildcats. Ramel boots it away. Caught by Kaus at the 23 yard line. Makes one man miss. Slips a tackle. And it's brought down just shy of the 29-yard line, and that'll be the final play of the first quarter. So the second quarter will begin with Minster with the football and a 21-8 lead over Fort Recovery here on WOSN. Second quarter about to get underway here as we get a great shot. Is that, do I have a bold spot right there? Is that, no, no, that is not. That That is a wisdom spot. That is just showing your oh, wisdom man. and I don't maturity. Ever get, I don't ever get to look at the back of my <laughs> head. I don't, I don't know if I like that camera angle. I, don't, I might have to scrap that as the second quarter. Mincer not scrapping anything offensively. And they got three, had the ball three times, three touchdowns as they start the fourth drive. Yeah, Fort Recovery's, uh, you know, they're, they're really in a tough spot now because I feel like Minster's kind of, they've set the tone. And so uh, they really need to get a turnover or something here defensively. Steffi to hand off to Schmeezing. He's spun down shy of the line of scrimmage, so a tackle for loss there as Bo Tin gets another stop there in the backfield. 
10, a six foot, 240 pound senior from that defensive tackle spot making the tackle. Yeah, and I think that's where, the, you know, I said it just a few moments ago, but that's where they're going to have to start making some noises up front. Uh, Minster's uh, really moving them. Uh, they've, they've made gaping holes in the first quarter to run through. So the defensive line of Fort Recovery is going to have to respond. Stephanie and Schmeezing in the backfield once again. Second and 10. Steffi will roll out on the play action. It's going to go deep. He's looking for Webker and couldn't connect. Webker had to turn around on the route late to try to come back and grab the football and weren't able to connect on that one. No, and I like the play action call. Um, went to the corner, but it looked like that, the, you know, maybe there was just a little bit, the sink was a little bit off. Uh, Steffi threw outside and receiver ran inside. So third and ten, and really one of the first times tonight, John, where Minster's been anywhere close to a third and long. Yeah, you know, they've had those uh, big chunks on first down, and they've really had short yardage uh, after that. So uh, you might want to, you might get to see them throw the ball down the field a little bit more here. Steffi, the sophomore, in the gun. A penalty flag will blow it dead before we get going. And a timeout called by the Wildcats before the play. They want to talk it over on third and ten the first time that they've been forced faced with a fourth and third and long. We'll step aside here on WOSN. The scoreboard tonight presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Third and ten here for the Wildcats. Steffi in the gun, looking, flush from the pocket, and he's going to be gobbled up. Jose Martinez on the sack for Fort Recovery. That's a big play for that Indians D. Yeah, I, you know, I feel bad now because I, you know, kind of called the Fort Recovery defensive line out a, a little bit ago, and boy, have they stepped it up yeah. and, and really made some uh, some great plays there. And that's the first time Steffi's had any uh, pressure whatsoever, and that really puts them if they can if they can make a good special teams play here, it's going to give them great field position. So the first forced punt of the evening for Fort Recovery as Minster goes touchdowns on their first three drives as the punt sent away. Fair catch signaled for by Holman at the 46-yard line. He grabs it. And you're right, John, the Indians going to have pretty good starting field position here. Yeah, I mean, they, they responded defensively, and that, I think that's the, the thing that Coach Niekamp's going to really stress to his kids, especially when they get into halftime here, is that this is going to be the type of game. It's going to be a back-and-forth game, and we're going to have to just stick with it and stay in there and, and keep fighting back. So the ball spotted at the 45-yard line. This Fort recovery will go back to work. Touchdown on the first play of the drive, or first play of the game for them, and then threw an interception and forced to punt the last time out. We'll see what Kale Ramble and the Indians can put together here on first and ten from their own 45-yard line. A 6-5 signal caller in the gun, looking to throw once again. Trips in the backfield as he tries to scramble, gain of about two yards there as Gabe Bornhorst makes the stop for Minster. Yeah, they brought Bornhorst off of a blitz there and a kind of a delayed blitz, and he and he comes in there and, and does a really nice job of making Ramble scramble and, and getting a good first down stop. So a gain of just two there on first down for Fort Recovery. And really, th there hasn't been a whole ton of success there on first down for Fort Recovery outside of the, the pitch and catch to start the last drive. No, they, they've got to get something going. I think they want to get their running game going. It just it hasn't been as easy as it sounds. Hartnagel brought down at midfield as Adam Rindler on the tackle from Minster, but it's going to be third to about five after the four-yard carry by Hartnagel. And that's a good, that's a really good position to be in. Third and five is manageable. It's you can you can basically run about anything that you have in your playbook. Um, it's when you get into those third and nines, third and tens, third and elevens, which really puts you in a tough spot. So ball, the nose of the football right at the midfield stripe here at Memorial Field in Minster. So the Wildcats have a 21 to eight lead. Ramel with Hartnagel to his left. Ramel, plenty of time now, pressured, and he's brought down Charlie Schmeezing, the sack. He had five and a half coming into tonight, make it six and a half on the big third down sack from the junior. Well, the coverage was great. They, they played two high safeties, and they had everyone covered underneath. Really didn't have anybody open for Ramel. Now, the tough part was, uh, Garrett, is that it was third and five with the ball at the 50. You know, if that ball's thrown away, there's a potential – you know, maybe going for it on fourth mm -hmm. down, but with a big sack now, you're you have no chance. Uh, 
you have no decision to make. You have to punt. After trading touchdowns, we now traded punts between the two as Rammel, the low line drives kick, going to be corralled at the 30 or 25 yard line, excuse me, as Niemeyer out to the 40 yard line to the 42 yard line. Or excuse me, not Niemeyer. That's Chase Kaus. As Kaus returns it out for a nice return for the Wildcats. Well, we, we've watched these these uh, four Minster receivers. They've they've all had a really uh, a good season, and they've done some incredible things. James Niemeyer, Devin Webker, Connor Schmeezing. But the one I really like right now is Chase Kaus. He can move not only uh, you know uh, vertically, but horizontally. He is quick. And he reminds me of uh, back in the day, the old Minster running backs, uh, uh, the Parks brothers that yes. uh, weren't big, but, man, were they quick. Steffi hands off to Schmeezing. Counter Schmeezing, a gain of about seven yards there on the carry. And Schmeezing fits that kind of uh, Park brothers <laughs> description <laughs> as well. Not, not the world's biggest athlete, but he is awful quick when he gets the football in his hands. And I like how hard they they run. I mean, they get the ball and they they are north and south right now. I mean, they're not they're not trying to dance. They're not trying to look for a hole. They put their head down and they go. Steffi will be by his lonesome in a shotgun once again on second and four with under eight minutes to go here in this first half. Wildcats with a two touchdown advantage. Schmeezing, same motion once again, and they'll hand it off to him once again. He explodes through the hole for the first down. Is pushed backwards by Bo Tin, but he did get enough to move the chains. They like that power scheme. They're blocking down on the front side, pulling the backside guard, uh, and, and really uh, Gabe Barnhorst is that backside guard, and he's pulling through there and making, making room for those backs to, to run through. Justin Bergman leading the way through as well as a lead blocker from his wing running back spot as Steffi will line up by his lonesome once again. Three wide receivers to his left, a wing and a wide receiver to his right on first and ten. Steffi keeps it himself. Out to the 40-yard line, continuing to move that pile. A gain of eight yards there by the sophomore Steffi. Yeah, I feel like I say it every week, so I, you know, I try not to say it, but here I am going to say it again. You know, these these teams, they're so quarterback driven that, mm -hmm. you know, the blocking schemes uh, are, are are set up for bat running backs. But when you have the quarterback run, a lot of times defenses are not structurally uh, uh, made to cover the quarterback, and so it really puts defenses in a tough spot uh, to try to defend those quarterback runs. And, and offenses have done a great job of capitalizing on that. Of why am I playing 10 on 11 when I, when I can play 11 on 11? Well, someone got smart a few years ago, and it's been, you know, kind of the spread, you know, uh, extravaganza that we've seen over the last 15, 20 years. Steffi able to pick up the first down as he calls his own number once again. That moves those chains. You get a great look at the replay here. You see Steffi go through the hole. He's met and then able to spin forward and down for a couple of extra yards. And I think the only thing about, you know, doing that is that, you know, you run into that op that chance of getting your quarterback hurt. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen, you know, Marcel Blasting game in Coldwater a few weeks ago go down, and he's out for several weeks now, and that's kind of the, the risk that you take by running the quarterback so much. Steffi will send Schmeezing in motion. Pump fake. He's got a, a pump fake again and will keep it himself, and he picks up the first down and more. Just shy of the 20-yard line, Steffi thought he had a man, and he slipped. And so instead tucked it and ran, and he got another first down scamper. Well, the decision making is <laughs> incredible. I mean, you know, you, you see this play develop here, and he has a guy, and, and, and he immediately knows he's not going to throw it there, and he just takes it and runs. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't pull up and think about it. He takes it and he goes, and boy, that was a really good run and first down for the Wildcats. So just knock it on the door of the red zone at the 22 yard line. As the Wildcats continue to chew up this clock here in this first quarter on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. He'll now send Schmeezing in motion. And Steffi looking to throw. Standing in the pocket, flushed as Bo Tin forces him out. He'll throw it in the end zone, nearly intercepted by the Indians. Yeah, that was intended for Kaus, Chase Kaus. And I think the, the thing that's interesting is that uh, he, I think he was going against Riggs Toby there. Uh, number 12, but um, one of the things that uh, happened was that ball was underthrown, and Chase Kaus did a nice job of actually playing defense and making sure the ball uh, didn't get intercepted. Yeah, live to find another day on second and 10 here. Steffi gets the call from the sideline, and we'll try to back out to the huddle. 
He'll be lined up in the backfield with Schmeezing behind him. Frimmel the wing. Schmeezing the handoff. Hole in the middle of the field, out to the 15-yard line. Reese Wendell the tackle. Just a 5'10 freshman, but uh, nice job there from his linebacker spot to make that stop. And you see Minster going tempo now, quickly getting to the line of scrimmage and trying to, to catch for recovery off, off balance here. Another Schmeezing carry, and Schmeezing out into the open field. Schmeezing to the pylon. He's in for a touchdown. A 16-yard touchdown run for Connor Schmeezing as Minster extending that lead to 27-8. They quickly went and got set. Uh, Fort Recovery quite wasn't ready. And you see Schmeezing just do a fantastic job of avoiding tacklers and then getting to the corner of the end zone to give Minster really a commanding lead here early in, or in the second half, or first half, Carrot. 16-yard scamper by Schmeezing. He's listed as a wide receiver, but has done a nice job on the ground here in the opening half for the Minster Wildcats. Steffi's extra point is up and good and make it 28-8 Minster on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard here in the second quarter on WOSN. The first half offensive explosion by the Wildcats has them on top 28-8 over the Fort Recovery Indians. I'm Garrett Seawright. Join alongside John Zerby here as the Wildcats await to kick it away to the Fort Recovery Indians. As that is onside kick, or short kick, I guess, would be the better terminology, but it's corralled by Alex Garkey, and he makes the easy catch there. And it's going to be relatively good starting field position there for the, for the Indians. I always laugh because I don't know if there's a, a formal name for that kickoff. You know, like you have like a pooch punt, but yeah. I don't know what that what you call that. And a coach for a long time, I mean, there's never really a good the name for it. The old sand wedge <laughs> kickoff there. I don't know. A this lob. is time for you to like to create don't, something I'm going to be laying in bed tonight about 2.30 <laughs> in the morning going, what are we going to call that? What are we going to call that? There's Ramble in the gun with three wide receivers to his right. They'll hand off to Hartnagel. He's got a little bit of room to run. Explodes through a defender. He's got the first down carry. That's Mac football right there. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Ethan Hartnagel, uh, you got to watch this run. He's going to come up a little gimpy here. But, uh, boy, that first down run was impressive. You see him uh, get the handoff here and watch this explosion here. And Ooh, Nice. That's a collision. <laughs> and then he keeps on getting yards. So the first down is they'll turn around and hand it off. This one to Greasy, Caden Greasy. About a four-yard carry there for the sophomore's first time. We called his name tonight. Yeah. You know, Garrett, I'm not a smart man. My wife would confirm that. But <laughs> when they, when both these teams run the ball on first down, they are getting chunks of yards. Yeah. And they're giving themselves a great uh, field position by running the ball on first down. We, we, you know, they really, besides two big pass plays, haven't thrown the ball exceptionally well. But... On the ground, both teams have been impressive. So second and six here after that four-yard gain by Greasy. As they'll send a man in motion, that's Reese Guggenbiller. Rammel, time to throw. Throwing to Guggenbiller out of the back of the backfield. And he left it just a little short. And, you know, down this early, you hate to look ahead, but I think that, you know, being past the 50-yard line, they're in four-down territory. You've seen them being aggressive the first time they scored going for two. You're going to start to see them, I think, go for, you know, use all four downs to try to get a first down. Trailing 28-8 to eight here in the first half. Minster won the first meeting between these two, 41-21, back in week four. Rammel in the pistol, Greasy behind him. They'll hand off to Greasy. He's able to slip one tackle, lost his footing just when he tried to make that cut, so it's a gain of about a yard and a half. But Greasy was going to have a little bit more room to run, but he lost his footing, and... John, we, we went down on the field before the game and, and looked at it, and the, the grass was just oddly uh, laying down <laughs> oddly and uh, just lost his lost his grip there when he went to make that cut. Well, I thought it looked wet when, in pregame. You know, we're down there, we're, we're looking at the field, and, and, of course, we're in like this mini drought thing I'm hearing about on the <laughs> 75 weather stations that I have on, you know, my, my TV at home. But um, I, I thought the field looked a little wet, and, uh, and it showed right there. There's a little bit of slippage. So Rammel will be by his lonesome. Now we'll have Greasy to his right in the shotgun on fourth and four. Rammel hangs in the pocket. His receiver slipped, nearly intercepted, nearly caught by Riggs-Toby. 
great concentration to even give himself a chance at it. He was right at the first down stick and again slips on the grass but was able to nearly corral it and also nearly intercepted by James Niemeyer. Yeah, that was that was a close call. I mean, you think maybe not getting that is, is a bad thing, but I think that, you know, not getting picked off could have been, you know, worse. And so just getting out of there with good field position, if you're for recovery, you, you got to think you, you avoided one there. So Minster takes over at their own 41-yard line with just under three minutes to go here in this first half. As Steffi lines up in the shotgun, schmeezing to his left. Steffi looking to throw, has all day to fire over the middle. It's caught by Devin Webker at the 35-yard line. A big pitch and catch there to the senior wide receiver. And that's a big play to start the drive for the Wildcats. Well, the key there was the offensive line. Gabe Brogan, Steffi, tons of time to skip back in the pocket and sit there. And he was able to find Devin Webker over the middle on a deep post route. That route takes a long time to develop. But So the offensive line, those guys did a great job of protecting and allowing that play to develop. So Steffi, after the big throw, will line back up in the shotgun with Schmeezing to his left. Two wide receivers split outside to each, split out wide to each side. And Steffi will throw again, looking right, surveys the defense, scrambles at the 35, is now right at the first down stick. A nice catch made along the sidelines there by the Wildcats as Dylan Heitkamp corrals it, but there will be a discussion of whether Steffi was past the line of scrimmage. Well, the official just threw the flag. I mean, he had it. You know, he, you can see Steffi here, the official looking at him, and I'm telling you about three seconds after he threw it, there came the flag. And you can see the Fort Recovery coaches trying to, you know. His entire body has to be past the down marker. I think that's a legal throw. And, and and that's tough because, you know, when a quarterback scrambles like that, it looks like they're probably going to, yeah, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna stick it to him. And we'll get another look at this replay here. As you see, Steffi has to be right behind that 35-yard line. has to be entirely past it for the penalty to be thrown. And the official's right there, and boy, that's as close as it gets. As Steffi hangs his left foot back. I, it's as close as it gets, and I, I think, um, you, you know, you see it in real time. We're getting the, the benefit of 1% right, right. speed there, but that's a that's a tough call to make right in the moment. It's a judgment call at that point, you know, just whatever the official thinks is the right call, and, and obviously he thought it was he was over the line. So Steffi will roll back at midfield, throws back to Schmeezing, and Schmeezing, the Indians believe his knee was down when he made the catch. Schmeezing, scampering inside the 10-yard line, makes another man miss, reverses field, and Schmeezing is in for the touchdown. Connor Schmeezing from 40 yards out puts another touchdown on the board for the Minster Wildcats. Well, you've seen the Fort Recovery people wanting to see if his knee was down. We're going to maybe get a chance to see this on the replay. I, I didn't think his knee was down, but I'll tell you what a great block by Gabe Barhorst, the center. Kind of a, I hate to use the word peel back block, but you know, he, he made a really great block on the backside and really broke Connor Schmeezing. And after that, he did a fantastic job of making plays here. Ooh, 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 ooh Garrett. Ooh, 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 <laughs> well. <laughs> some folks wearing purple probably aren't gonna like that, that replay. Nonetheless, it does go up on the scoreboard. The extra point is good as well. We'll take another look at the, the replay here where Steffi rolled to the right, threw back to Schmeezing to his left, and Schmeezing might have might have dropped a knee there. We'll get another great look at it from our WOSN crew. I, I think Minster got away with one there. You can see the knee is, uh, yeah. So uh, they're gonna, they're gonna, the four recovery coaches are gonna go back tonight and they're gonna be upset about that one, but uh, you know. Uh, that's a that's a tough break for the for, well, for recovery. But and, and how about this the open field running there by by Connor Schmeezing all over <laughs> yeah. all over the green grass just wherever he wanted to go he did and a nice scamper there by Connor Schmeezing once he got the ball in his hands to get in from 40 yards out. Yeah, Connor Schmeezing super athletic, uh, another sophomore there, not real big, five six, one fifty five, but crazy athletic. These guys they got athletes all over the field and breaking tackles and, and, you know, the thing I like about it is the official didn't call him down, so he made a play, you know, keep playing. Right, nobody blew the whistle. As Atchison returns the kickoff out to the 30-yard line before he's 
pile driven back into the turf and also a two-point conversion made there by Minster on the extra point. We'll take a look at the two-point conversion. They snap it right to Steffi and he lobs it out to wow. another schmeezing <laughs> for the uh, Charlie schmeezing for the two-point conversion. So um, Minster now leading 36-8. Yeah, they're, they're coming out super aggressive. I mean, they have not backed off even when they've jumped out, you know, for uh, up a couple touchdowns. You think maybe they want to run some clock or, you know, maybe just work on extra points. And, no, nah, they're going to be aggressive and keep coming at Fort Recovery. So Kale Rambo will line up in the shotgun. Back to pass. Only three rushes. Three Wildcats rush as Wolf gets there. Ramble now in the open field, able to juke another defender, and now gets out to the 35-yard line. So a gain of five for Ramble after what looked like it might be a sack in the backfield. Yeah, I think he ran about 45 yards total, but it's only going to be a gain of five. But K. Ramble does a really nice job of, of getting out of the, this uh, pressure and making, I know Brady Wolf was there to make a play, and I like how Ramble just kind of keeps his footing and, and makes a really good gain for the, for the Indians. So a timeout on the field as Minster wants that football back after the scramble there from Kale Rammel. So with 1.39 to go, Minster goes for two to put the advantage at 28. They want the football back because they want the second half to be as short as possible. If they can put another touchdown on the board, you start the second half with the running clock as you, you see the all-Mac football team there. A couple of Fort Recovery and Minster Wildcats uh, dotting the all-Mac football team, but you see those sophomores from Minster. You don't see sophomores on first-team All-Midwest Athletic Conference all that often. Yeah, this community's got to be really excited about what's in store for Minster in the next couple of years. And you know, I've always thought just making anything in the MAC is is incredible. You know, you look at all these names and a lot of really good athletes and. One of the things I was always, you know, I, I check this stuff every year, but you know, Marion Local has constantly, you know, is always, in, in Cold War as well, been in the driver's seat for the mm -hmm. league uh, conference titles, and they don't always have the most guys that get first or second team. It's always like these other schools that have so many guys. It just is a testament to how good this league is. So second and five here for the Indians. And what, like Marion Local, uh, I know they're faithful, sometimes get upset that, you know, they don't get more offensive recognition. Well, your defense is so good, you got to go short fields, and then your t t boys don't play in the second half right. because you've been so successful in the first as the Indians get the first down scamper there for Ethan Hartnagel. And sometimes those things, you know, as coaches, you vote on that stuff, and you're looking at stats a lot. So, mm -hmm. you know, you look at the stats, and you know the kids that hurt you when you played them, and you vote for them. And sometimes your kids that are just your solid kids don't get that recognition. Ball thrown to Troy Holman out of the backfield is. Rammel left it just a hair high. Home in the 5'11 junior was on that first team all Midwest Athletic Conference list there, but the ball incomplete with 1.21 to go here in the half. Yeah, and I think Fort Recovery's in a position now, Garrett, where they're down so much, they're probably in a position where they're going to have to score and score fast. Mm -hmm. And not just because it's, you know, at the end of the first half here, but just because they're down so much. And it's, it's not what they want to do. They want to be a little bit more balanced than what they're going to have to be. Indians will get the football to begin the second half. It's Rammel. Time to throw once again. Steps up in the pocket. Tries to split a pair of Wildcats, but he's tugged down to the ground. By number 33 for Minster. That's Will Frimmel on the stop. So Fort Recovery calls the timeout here. Yeah, Will Frimmel. He, he just plays that defensive line position really well. He's a defensive end. I, I know they kind of have this listed out as a 3-3 a three, three defense, but they're really a, they're really playing a more of a forefront defense today, and Will Frummel's done a really good job of just just keeping contained and making sure that uh, uh, that Kale Ramble doesn't get out of the pocket. So 36-8, you see the max standings there where Minster 5-3 and three in the Midwest out of the conference where Fort Recovery 2-6 and six in the back, but, you know, those two wins propel you into a playoff spot where not only you're in the playoffs, you're the number 11 seed in the playoffs where uh, the, the Indians, their third straight playoff appearance. Yeah, the Indians have done a really good job, and Coach Camp has done a really a fantastic job of, of keeping his team in the playoffs, and they have a brutal schedule. I mean, you look at their schedule and look at the teams that they play, only a few wins, you know, 16 teams getting in is going to get you in the, in the postseason. Um, I mean, I, and Brent Niekamp's been a head coach there for, um, you know, 17 years where um, when he started, um, I was in high school at Parkway, and Fort Recovery Parkway was whoever won that game was, was going to be their only win of the year, and you weren't <laughs> going to finish last in the MAC. And now, you know, the Indians have a state championship under their belt and are in the playoffs for the third consecutive year as Ramel rolls. It's caught for the 
first down there as Reese Guggenbiller makes the catch at the 45-yard line. Brought down, but it moves the chains. Yeah, it was a big play there and a nice, uh, a nice job of finding the soft uh, parts of the coverage and completing the pass. And now you're going to see him go tempo here, two-minute offense trying to get in before halftime. Rammel getting the Indian set. Now will roll to this near sideline, looking to throw once again. Will stop. Goes deep for Guggenbiller and out through him just a hair. Well, on that play, I, I've seen one thing, and I've seen that Rammel has a gun. I mean, he literally was rolling to his left and, and turning through back across his body, and he threw it about 20 yards too deep, but, boy, he has a cannon. And just flip those hips right in the middle of the field and let it fly. So get a look at it here on the replay. I love this camera angle, just elevated inside the end zone. But you see, he stops and lets it fly. And when you can out-throw somebody by about 10, 15 yards, you got a gun on you. Yeah, and you know, as a coach, you always tell your players, throw the long ones long, throw the short ones short. And you know, if, if you're going to throw a deep one, make sure that the only person that's going to get it is your guy. That one just behind Riggs Toby at the first down marker. So a pair of incompletions here after the first down completion there by Fort Recovery will bring up third and ten. Yeah, and I think if you're Minster, you know, you, you just, I wouldn't say you're in a prevent defense, but you're not, you know, th there's a lot of blitzing happening early in the game, and they've kind of backed off mm -hmm. of some of that blitzing and played a little bit more coverage here in most of the second quarter. So third and ten. See if the Wildcats dial up that pressure once again. They're showing blitz, and they'll drop out of it. Barely a blitz. Barely any rush from the Wildcats. Rammel now scrambling, looking for the first down. Has to lower his shoulder to the 37-yard line, just shy of the marker as the clock continues to tick under 30, and now a timeout call. Yeah, and you hit the nail on the head. I mean, they're, they're showing blitz, but they're only bringing three, and those guys aren't really – they're not really coming very hard, and that's because Rammel has got an arm and he can throw deep. So they got to play coverage, and they definitely don't want to give up anything here right before halftime. So the timeout called with 27 seconds. It's fourth and two for Fort Recovery when they break the huddle here. And you also you got to kind of avoid. You know, you, you you want the first down. You don't want Minster to get the football back because they've showed. Hey, we want to kind of put the the pedal down here and, and get that 30 point lead in this first half so we can start the second half with that running clock. Yeah, I have no doubt that if uh, they do get a stop here, Minster's gonna they're gonna try to score. I mean, they're not gonna take a knee and go into halftime. They're gonna they're gonna stay aggressive and and that's the kind of mindset that Coach Whiting is just really trying to instill in these players is that no matter what time of the game, no matter what game it is, we're gonna be aggressive. So fourth and two out of the huddle. Wildcats with a 36-8 lead. Indians trying to move the chains and trying to put some more points on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. As Rammel has Hartnagel to his left in the gun. Wildcats will drop nine into coverage as Rammel surveys the defense. Now will scamper, has the first down and more. Rammel just outside of the red zone at the 21-yard line. Yeah, Kale Rimmel just did a really nice job, Garrett, because uh, like you said, about nine guys in coverage, playing really a true cover four where there's four guys deep and five guys underneath trying to – so there's just not a lot of space for receivers to get open. But Rimmel did a nice job of not only scrambling to get the first down but getting out of bounds to, to stop the clock. So 15 seconds remain here in this first half with the ball at the 20-yard line. Cale Rammel, the 6'5 senior with 10 touchdown passes on the season. Would love to add another one here. In the gun, rolling to his right, looking, pressured, still holding on to the football, and now we'll just dump it out of bounds. Yeah, smart move. That gives him an opportunity now for maybe one play. Uh, it's going to have to be quick. And, you know, um, at this point, I don't think a field goal is going to do you any good. I mean, Indians 0 for 1 on field goal attempts this year. Eight seconds and no timeouts. Probably not going to have the opportunity to run more than one play unless you are throwing immediately out of bounds. And, you know, without any timeouts, it's, it's going to be really difficult to do that. So I think you just take your shot here. You, you get your receivers down in the end zone and you just throw it up. And, you know, if you get picked, you get picked. So Rammel with eight seconds to go in the half. The play will be the 11th of the drive as he'll roll to the right. Looking. Ball is swatted away and coverage by Devin Webker. So two seconds remain as the intended target was Riggs-Toby, but Webker just steps in front of it. 
as you see on the replay, and swats it now. Yeah, Devin Webker does a really good job of, of playing that ball and seeing it from a distance. He, uh, he kind of closed that gap right at the end and, and did a great job of re using his right, his right hand and, and knocking that ball down and, and making sure that the, there was no opportunity to make a catch. But, but also not using that left hand to wrap the receiver and get a, a, you know, a pass interference penalty that gives him 15 yards and an even better shot at scoring a touchdown as well. And you see that so much, especially in college and pro, of those guys grabbing onto each other. And he just really technique-wise played that perfectly. So the final play of the half, Ramble in the gun, Hart and Hagel to his right. The 6'5 signal caller stands in and will throw on up looking for Guggenbiller. It's intercepted in the end zone by Niemeyer. And that will do it for the first half of play. James Niemeyer's sixth interception of the season comes at the end of the half as it's just a jump ball looking for Reese Guggenbiller, the six-foot junior, and instead it lands in the hands of James Niemeyer, the six-foot sophomore, and that's how the first half ends. So we'll end to the break. Minster with a 36-8 lead over full recovery here on WOSN. Second half about to get underway here in this Division 7 Region 28 first round playoff matchup where Minster holds a 36 to 8 lead over the Fort Recovery Indians. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined with John Serby bringing you all the action here from Minster where uh, the first half, John, really went pretty well there for the Wildcats <laughs> offensively. Yeah, a lot of excitement and a lot of fun and you can see the big plays uh, over and over yep. again, Garrett. I think we were kind of Surprised to see those big plays early, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, and, and the Wildcats gave up that touchdown on the first play of the, of the game for Fort Recovery offensively and then rattle off 29 straight points to, to kind of say, hey, you know, this is we're going <laughs> to take control here in this first half. Yeah, and I know they wanted to come out and set the tone and be aggressive, and they did that. And now they've got such a big lead here in the second half. It's going to be interesting to see what they do if they stay that aggressive or they try to just take time off the clock. So Fort Recovery will receive the opening kickoff here in the second half. And they'll kick it. That's that, you know, sand wedge kickoff once again there where Atchison's <laughs> got his fourth return of the night. And he's into the open field out to the 40-yard line. A nice return there by Luke Atchison to get it out to the 40-yard line there for the Indians. Yeah, and if you're for recovery, you know, it's 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 going to be interesting to see what the halftime adjustments were. I, I think that they wanted to establish their ground game and really get their uh, offensive line involved in, in, in their offense, but I think at this point, being down, you're going to have to open uh, the playbook up and continue to try to throw the ball downfield. And really, you got nothing to lose. Um, no. <laughs> if you, if you're, you're down by 28, and it's the final game of the year. If you don't get 28, so you can do whatever you want. As Hartnagel, the carry, reverses field, brought down at the 44-yard line. I think one thing they'll have to do this, this half is try to keep – their own defense off the field. I felt like Minster's offense was on the field quite a bit, especially early in the first half. So uh, running the football, you can see a good, nice hard run there to get uh, positive yardage. Brady Wolf, the tackle for the Wildcats, and Minster held the football for 14 minutes of the 24 minutes there in the first half, so they were on uh, a, a decent chunk more than Fort Recovery's offense was. Ramble in the gun. Another handoff to Hartnagel. He's got a little room to run out to the first down marker before he's stood up by that Minster defense, but it will move the chains on the second carry of the half. Well, and, they, and you know, we, we talked about it in the first half, but just establishing that run game, especially on first down, and they got a good gain on first down, and that enabled them here on second down to get a really good start. And, um, you know, these, both these teams have run the ball well tonight, Garrett. So uh, it's interesting to see them come out and, and say, you know, let's 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 go back to the running game and establish it. Well, and it just opens up everything else there. You know, a play action pass was the first play of the game that went for 58 yards on the touchdown, and they'll turn around and hand off to Hartnagel once again. And Hartnagel has positive yards, another five-yard carry there for Ethan Hartnagel, the sophomore. Yeah, I've been impressed with uh, Hartnagel tonight. He uh, does a nice job of keeping his footing. Uh, we've seen earlier, you know, it's, it is kind of slick out there. I see guys, you know, uh, they kind of look like they're, they're they're having trouble with their feet, but he does a nice job of keeping his balance and keeping his head uh, up and down and his body uh, square. So you can tell that they talked about establishing a run there at the halftime break. Three straight carries for Ethan Hartnagel. Brings up second and five as he'll line up behind Rammel in the pistol. And they'll fake the handoff to him. Rammel looking to throw, takes a hit as he uncorks one, gets it deep, and is that the third interception for Niemeyer? Are you kidding me? Holy moly, 
James Niemeyer with one of the catches of the year. He tucks it on his helmet. My goodness, what a grab by James Niemeyer. I'll tell you what, this, this, is, this is probably going to be a top 10 play of the week. I mean, if you see the great throw by Rammel, but James Niemeyer, Getting here on the great did a great job of not only <laughs> <laughs> not only making the catch, but making sure the ball doesn't hit the ground by putting it on top of his helmet. What a grab. He rolls over to avoid the grass touching the ball. You see a great look at it there. He makes sure he gets the interception. What a corral by James Niemeyer, his third interception of the night. And that one stands out a little bit more than the first two. That was that was impressive. There's an exclamation point on that play. And that'll be something fun for Minster, you know, tomorrow as they're looking at the film. And, you know, I can imagine the film room getting excited about uh, that pick. So Minster, unfortunately, backed up in their own back near their own goal line at the five yard line. Schmeezing, the handoff, Connor Schmeezing off to the races. Connor Schmeezing looking to go 95 yards. Stiff Arms is down at the 40, but another big carry for Connor Schmeezing. Had 61 rushing yards in the first half, has about 55 there. Well, and, and just what a fantastic cut right at the line of scrimmage to, to break it open. And at this point, it's a track race. And uh, boy, he got out there and got great yardage. And uh, that was really kind of the, uh, the answer to what Minster needed for the field position. Touchdown saving tackle made by the Fort Recovery Indians. But a big rumble there for Connor Schmeezing. And a sideline warning issued to the Minster Wildcats. They've got a couple of things to be happy about there. Back-to-back -back plays that will get you off your seat. Well, they are exciting. And, you know, we talked at halftime with, you know, some of our press box uh, uh, people that we're hanging out with tonight, and, and they just have a lot to be excited about. This sophomore class is uh, not only, like I said, the word exciting, but just they're elusive. They get out there and they make plays, and it, that's what makes it fun to watch. Counter schmeezing one of those sophomores for the Wildcats. Sophomore quarterback Brogan Steffi joining him in the backfield on first and 10 from the 40. They'll send Webker in motion in closer to the line. Steffi looking, now will scramble. Eyes downfield, nearly intercepted, is it? It is picked off by Ross Pearson. Nope, they'll say it touched the turf. But Ross Pearson, the 6'1 senior linebacker, thought he had a pick. Yeah, and it looks like uh, 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 Steffi just almost like he almost slipped there kind of at the end and I think maybe somebody got a little hand on it. Good call by the official. Seen a little grass on the ground, and a uh, really nice job of Fort Recovery to, to play good defense on that play. Yeah, you see Steffi, when he goes to throw, uh, he ends up kind of jumping just a bit, maybe, or just losing his footing. He doesn't have a foot on the ground, and that you see that ball just nose dive. But it did get a little grass there, and Ross Pearson didn't care. He wanted to, he wanted to pick. <laughs> he did. Pearson did a really good job coverage-wise of being in the right position. Steffi in a gun, schmeezing behind him. Hand off to Connor Schmeezing. Has them lead blockers met in the hole by Riggs Toby. So a gain of five there for Schmeezing on second down. You know, one of the things I like about Schmeezing is, is that, you know, sometimes you have to let plays develop. They're not, you know, there's, there are plays where you're just trying to hit the hole as you as fast as you possibly can. And then there's other plays, especially when guards are pulling and guys are kicking out, that you have to let it develop. And you watch Connor Schmeezing here. He kind of just waits, sees the hole, sees the block, and then gets there and puts his head down and gets positive yardage. You see Alex Frimmel coming around from that wing spot just looking for an opposite color jersey to hit. And he got one there. So pick up a five. Third and five from the 35 with 8.40 to go in the third quarter. They'll hand it off. This one goes to 27. Justin Bergman, the ball carrier. List is number 25 on our roster. So Bergman's first carry of the night. Gain of two will bring up fourth and three. I think that's been one of the uh, the strategies of both coaches tonight is changing numbers on us. I mean, <laughs> that, hey, we're going to play a team twice. Let's change some jersey numbers, and maybe that will be something that will. Yeah, you, you catch four recovery off guard. You caught us off guard up here, <laughs> but that's all right. We're, we're hanging tough. Luckily, the PA announcer knows who who's who wearing black on fourth and two as Steffi as Schmeezing behind him. They'll now trade positions as Brady Wolf will go in motion. I'll hand off to Schmeezing. Schmeezing got the first down and more to the 25-yard line, carrying defenders for the first down carry. 
Yeah, Schmeezing's just getting stronger. I mean, with each carry, he's gaining confidence. And his downhill running, you can see him here. He's low, he's breaking tackles, he's falling forward, doing all the things that coaches love to see. And you get a great look at that uh, hole opening up there for Schmeezing from that end zone camera replay that he just found the hole, needed three yards, and was able to barrel through and pick up several more to get to the 25-yard line. The sophomore Steffi takes the snap and will roll to his left. Now sets up, throws back this way. One hand grab nearly corralled by Wolf. That would have been rivaling of Niemeyer's interception if he was able to stick that landing, but uh, just a little high, and when he tried to bring it back down to his hip, lost control of it. Yeah, this was, this was just a great play. Really, defensively, they did a nice job of uh, sniffing out the screen and uh, Brady Wolf did a <laughs> did a good job of making a play really out of nothing, and uh, that would have been a fun play. So second and ten on just the second throw of the drive there for Minster. Both passes have been incomplete. As Steffi has Schmeezing behind him. Turns, throws, the miscommunication, and it's intercepted by the Indians. Chase Kaiser with the pick for Fort Recovery. Steffi thought that was an out route. The wide receiver was running deep. The miscommunication results in a pick for Fort Recovery. Yeah, and that's uh, James Niemeyer ended up running a deep post. And uh, it looked more like a timing route because Steffi didn't really, I mean, he didn't really take a lot of time to, to stand back there and read stuff. It looked like a timing uh, issue. And uh, Steffi thought he was, uh, Niemeyer was going out, and Niemeyer thought he was, Knew he was going in, so that was a big play for Fort Recovery. I tell you what, we've traded touchdowns, we've traded punts, now we've traded interceptions to begin this third quarter as 7.04 remains on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. The handoff to Hartnagel, patiently parceling his way through that Minster defense. A gain of about four there for Hartnagel with 6.56 to go. And I know both teams want to be balanced. They they want to throw the ball, they, they want to get guys involved, but... Uh, both teams have been successful tonight, Garrett, when they run the football. Yeah. I mean, they really have. They, they've, they've been uh, mistake-free. They've grinded out yards. Um, I feel like that's where both teams have really uh, succeeded tonight. And Fort Recovery averaged just 90 yards on the ground coming into tonight. They have, they had, excuse me, 43 in the first half there as Rammel will scamper to the 35-yard line, just shy of that first down marker. I like his patience here. He rolls out. He's looking downfield, and uh, there's just not there's just not guys open. They're they're kind of rolling into the short side of the field, and Ramble does just a really good job of tucking it, getting yards, and, and putting themselves in, in a really good third and one, third and two position here. And didn't force the football anywhere that it didn't need to go. Anytime you're moving forward, I, 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 our cook used to say, you know, you can't go broke taking a profit. <laughs> so three yard gain. <laughs> Brings up third and two. Rammel flushed from the pocket, rolling to his right, directing the offense. He'll get the he's get the first down and more out to the midfield strike before he's brought down by Niemeyer. But it's another first down scamper there by Kale Rammel. Yeah, Rammel. He he's I, I like how he's just poised back there, and then when he does take off running, he knows that he's telling his guys, "Hey, please, please block that guy for me," and uh, he's able to pick up big yardage and puts them at midfield. So the Indians pick up a first down. Ball now at midfield. Rammel with Hart and Engel to his left and three receivers to the bottom of your screen. On first and ten. Hart and Engel to carry. Again, patient running. Hart and Engel has a 10-yard gain and more as he moved the chains with that 12-yard carry. It's Hart and Engel running hard here, John. Oh, he's... He's, I've been impressed with him, the way he runs. And this is kind of a counter. They bring the tackle and the guard. A really good kickout block there. And, and Hartnagel does a good job of planting his right foot in the grass and then getting good positive yardage. Yeah, nice pull and block there by Gabe Kanapke, number 67 for Fort Recovery. Timeout by Fort Re or by Minster, excuse me, and we'll step aside as well here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Fort Recovery putting together a drive here in the middle of this third quarter. The upcoming play will be the fifth of the drive that started at their own 27-yard line that they've got in to Minster territory at the 37-yard line here on first and 10. 
And Hartnagel, another carry, and Hartnagel again moving forward for a gain of four. Yeah, he's been one bright spot tonight and, uh, for Fort Recovery. I know they've only scored one touchdown, but he's been a really bright spot. And only being a sophomore, you know, they, they probably are going to look at him as someone to uh, build their future on. Five consecutive runs here for the Indians to begin this drive. They did have uh, one pass call that Ramel scampered for. He's got an injured Wildcat down on the far sideline. Look at the convergence of the athletic trainers taking care of the Minster Wildcats. As you see the final Associated Press poll where uh, several local squads represented here as uh, Division 7 really up for grabs. Anybody could uh, come out of Division 7 and as you see the just sheer number of teams listed there in the top 13 from our area, we've got a great chance to be represented in Canton once again. Yeah, Division 7 is that interesting one because Marion Local is up into 6. So, you know, when you look at Division 6, you kind of assume, you know, it's Marion Local's in the driver's seat. But Division 7 is the interesting one. You know, you hear New Bremen's name uh, thrown out there a lot. One team I would look at is LCC. Uh, you know, they... They've, uh, they've had a great season, but kind of quietly because they don't play a lot of area teams anymore. And, um, you know, I know they battled Fort Loramie just a few weeks ago yeah. uh, to a really good game. But uh, those two schools, Fort Loramie, LCC, and then obviously New Bremen, we don't see Antwerp much, but they are loaded this year. So uh, I'm, it's going to be interesting to, to kind of see how Division Seven shakes out. And credit to the Archers. I, uh, it was seven years ago they canceled their varsity football season because they didn't have enough kids, and now they're, you know, undefeated, the number four team in Division Seven in the final Associated Press poll is Adam Rindler, the injured Wildcat. That's walking good. under his own power. Yeah, it's good to see him walk off the field. You know, one thing that you don't want to see at this uh, point of the season is somebody going down in the playoffs. I mean, I feel like injuries typically happen earlier in the year. And, uh, you know, by this point of the year, guys are beat up and, yeah. and hurt already. So it's nice to see him get up and walk off the field. So second and seven upcoming here for the Indians. As Minster gets final instructions there from Seth Whiting, who... Uh, Familiar with the area, his dad Vic won two state championships as the head coach at Delphi St. John's back in the late 1990s. As a handoff to Greasy. Greasy, the very close to a first down. I believe he does have a first down carry. So Caden Greasy's first carry of the half ends up as a first down scamper. Yeah, and Caden Greasy's another, he's another sophomore there, Garrett. We, we just, I mean, I don't know if there's anybody else but sophomores playing in this game. I mean, it's it's a crazy how the league is very young, and there's a lot of kids coming up that's going to make this league even more exciting, than what, you know, in the next few years than what it already is. Absolutely. As Rammel in the gun, fakes the handoff to Greasy, looking to throw. Now flushed from the pocket, chased by Schmeezing. He'll just have to uncork one, and that's nearly thrown back into play by Noah Schwederman of Minster. You know, that was that was kind of an interesting uh, uh, play by Schwederman there that he tried to knock that ball back into play. Um, that's kind of dangerous because, you know, you think, well, yeah, he can knock it back to a defender, but he can also knock it back to maybe an offensive guy standing in there. So, um, but that's interesting, you know, looking at this schematically, um, Minster's not bringing a lot of heat. They're yeah. dropping everybody. There's just not a lot of guys open at this point. So three receivers to the bottom of your screen. Ramble on second and 10. I'll hand off to Caden Greasy. Greasy slips through a couple of tackles down to the 23-yard line. You know, five there for the sophomore running back. We'll bring up third and relatively short. And ball control is, is really the big thing that's been a, a difference in this half. We haven't seen any difference in the scoring, but uh, we, we've seen Minster score quickly when they do have the ball, and I think the best thing that you can do is keep the ball from Minster by running the ball, keeping the clock moving, and getting first downs. So 4.40 to go here in this third quarter. After the seven-yard scamper, Rammel on third down, surveys, finds Holman. Holman the catch, Holman the first down, able to avoid another tackler along that far sideline, down inside the 15-yard line, Troy Holman. Catch moves the chains once again for the Indians. Good schematic play call because you've got, we talked about them having coverage. So what they did is they're, sh they're sending receivers down the field and then they bring Holman in and let him run underneath uh, Troy Holman, underneath those backers who've already dropped into their zone and, hit, and it puts it right underneath those backers to make a really good game. Yeah, and Holman 510 yards on the ground, 650 yards through the air, nine total touchdowns. That's a guy you want to get the ball 
two if your Fort Recovery is Reese Kugenbiller goes in motion. They'll hand off to Hartnagel. That time gobbled up. Gabe Bornhorst in on the stop, as was Will Kanapke there for Minster. Yeah, and, and we've seen the, the Minster defense kind of loosen up this half coverage-wise, but now inside the red zone, Garrett, you're going to see them tighten up. The coverage is going to tighten up. You're going to see more man coverage, and um, it's going to be really tough for Fort Recovery to keep running these same plays to, to score. Second and nine after the one-yard gain by Hartnagel. Upcoming play, the 11th of the drive. It started at their own 27-yard line. Rammel has time. Will lob to the end zone looking for Holman, and he's got it. A touchdown for the Fort Recovery Indians from 13 yards out. The second touchdown pass from Kale Rammel to Troy Holman tonight. Cuts the lead for, to 36-14. Well, they did a great job of exposing that man coverage. They ran a crossing route. So you got one receiver running in and the inside receiver running out, crossing uh, the defenders up and making it really tough to, to play coverage. Troy Holman got... Uh, got behind the coverage and made a great catch. What a nice throw by Kale Rammel as well. So the Indians will trot back out for the two-point conversion attempt. Hartnagel and Holman in the backfield with Rammel. They'll now send Guggenbiller in motion. And Rammel has time to throw. Throws into the end zone, and it's incomplete. Riggs Toby, the intended target, couldn't connect. And the score remains 36-14 to 14 on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard here in the third quarter on WOSN. Get a great look at the Minster Wildcat. It's probably one of the warmest places to be tonight, John. <laughs> uh, on, on August 19th, that might not be very fun, but hey, on October 20, 28th, <laughs> that's, that's one of the benefits of being the, the Minster Wildcat. Botin, the kickoff. That one's going to stay just in bounds, just in bounds. And he has to pick it up at the one yard line. As Chase Kaus has to scoop it up at the one yard line. That's about as nice of a roll as you could ask for oh, that, on that, a kickoff. That was fantastic. And you can't really blame Chase Kaus because it looked like it was going out of bounds. Yeah. And then it looked like it was going in the end zone. So he's just trying to play it. And, it bounced just the right way both times, and that was really a, a good uh, field position starter for Fort Recovery defensively. Yeah, that football just dies, and he has to pick it up right there at the one-yard line and to turn around, and the first thing you see is guys in white wanting to come rip your block off. It's <laughs> a tough spot to be in to get it out even to the 11-yard line. is a, a nice return there by Kaus. I, it was funny because I almost seen him like, before it went out of bounds, he's like, oh, dang it, it's going right, to go. Right, and then he went back to the, the end, zone. end zone, and he's like, oh, dang it, no, it's like, <laughs> And then you know, oh, th this ball got kicked a long time ago. They've <laughs> they ran a long way. So Steffi in the shotgun, Schmeezing behind him. And Schmeezing, the sophomore, gets the handoff. He'll drive out to the 14-yard line, gain a three on first down for Schmeezing. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, this this both teams have really settled in this half. They, they've really, I, I'm, I'm, I like the way both teams are playing. They're aggressive. Um, they're both getting after it. And, um, you know, uh, I thought there for a little bit maybe this could, could turn ugly in the second half, but uh, credit yeah. to Fort Recovery, they've really battled back. Yeah, they go on an 11-play, 73-yard touchdown drive the last time. That took a, quite a bit of time off the clock there as Minster now with 2.30 to go here in the third quarter. Steffi in the gun, schmeezing to his right, leading 36-14 to 14 on second and seven. Quarterback keeper, and he gets to the 16-yard line before he's brought down by the mystery number 56. <laughs> well, and, and the defensive line there by uh, Fort Recovery doing a really good job of getting a push. Uh, and, and really, it's it's as old as the hills, but the low man wins. Yeah. And, and at this point of the game, kids are tired. You know, it's been a long season, um, and now you're playing in week 11, and uh, it's really true. Whoever's going to stay low is going to get the push. Third and six for the Wildcats at their own 15-yard line. Looking to move the chains. Steffi looking left, surveys, holds on to the football, lets it fly, and he's got a, another big throw to James Niemeyer up the seam, out to the 45-yard line, a gain of 30 there on third and six. What I liked about this was that James Niemeyer ran a, a post route down the middle of the field, and then he kind of noticed that, uh, that that 
that there wasn't there was no opening, so he readjusted his route and kind of sat in the opening, and uh, and and and. He was found by Steffi, yeah, and what a big play. So Brogan Steffi, another big throw there. Steffi at the halftime break was 7 of 10 for 160 yards, and adding to it here in this second half was we approach a minute to play on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard here in the third quarter. Steffi in a gun with Schmeezing, and he'll get the carry. Schmeezing straight up the middle of the field, has the first down and more into Fort Recovery territory at the 38-yard line. We talked about confidence, you know, early in the third quarter, but Connor Schmeezing with every carry is becoming more and more confident. You can see his downhill running here. He's just setting his feet and then exploding and putting his head down and falling forward. You know, he's not a big guy, but he is playing big right now. How much of that as a sophomore is the game kind of just slowing down for you the deeper you get into the season? Yeah, I think at this point you're, you're basically a junior. I mean, you really are. You've played a whole your whole sophomore season, so now you're, you're into that second – that second phase, but you're exactly right, Garrett. It is slowing down and the confidence. I mean, you can just see it. He's, mm -hmm. he's carrying, he's brooding with the confidence. He feels good about what he's doing. First and 10 after the carry by Schmeezing. Gets another one moving forward to the 36-yard line as Jose Martinez makes the tackle for Fort Recovery, but more positive yards for the Wildcats. And this is, this is good to set this tone, especially with the third quarter ending here going into the fourth quarter to put, get this, uh, set this tone going into the, the final quarter of the game. So that will be the final play of the third quarter. After three, Fort Minster leads 36-14 on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard here on WOSN. WOSN now the 24-7 channel stream. You can get it online, the Roku store, Apple store, and really a great gift, a $100 donation. Uh, you, you've got, you know, maybe your parents or your grandparents live out of state or out of the area. You can watch everything that WOSN puts out 24-7 online with the WOSN channel stream. And great gift for the holidays there. Schmeezing gets the handoff, and he gets very close to another first down. Going to be just a yard shy, but having that ability to watch Anywhere, anytime, John, that's, that's, a, that's a nice little feature. Well, and, and I think in today's age, you know, how true is it that you, you sit on your chair at home and you're typically watching your phone or your device? <laughs> you know, you're really not watching the TV as much anymore. So, yeah, absolutely a great gift, especially if you live far, far away. And Schmeezing gets the carry. He just powers ahead to the 20 or 31 yard line, I should say, not the 29. They're on the other side of the 30. So, third and one here for the Wildcats. They've ran the football effectively tonight. Now both teams, I think, can take away the, the fact that they've run the ball well. Minster, I think, has got to be excited about Connor Schmeezing. He's got the first down there to the 27-yard line, a gain of four for Schmeezing. Get another look at it here. As Schmeezing had 61 yards in the first half. He had the 55-yard carry there when they were backed up at their own five-yard line to start the half, and now has just kept tallying yard after yard after yard. And to their credit, four recoveries made them earn off every one of them. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's you know, they're not gaping holes or anything. But I think the interesting thing is, you, you know, coming into this game, you hear so much about Brogan Steffi. You know, just hear his name over and over again, even statistically. And just seeing Connor Schmeezing excel like this has really got to be a, a boost for the Wildcats. First and 10 from the 17. And off to Schmeezing once again. Schmeezing is off to the races. Can't can be brought down by Guggenbiller. Reese Guggenbiller brings him down at the four-yard line, the touchdown saving tackle by the junior, but another 10, 13-yard carry here by Schmeezing. There's another level, a little burst, especially when he gets back, he gets into linebacker level where he kind of, he kind of puts it into a higher gear, and you can see him accelerate. I thought he was going to break that one there. It was a nice uh, saving tackle there, but Connor Schmeezing is making a name for himself. Upcoming play is the ninth of the drive here for the Wildcats. First in goal from the four with the clock continuing to tick here at Minster. Steffi with Schmeezing behind him. Frimmel lined up as the wing. Schmeezing, the handoff, Schmeezing, the four-yard touchdown run. Put another one on the board for Connor Schmeezing from four yards out. And Minster extends that lead. I think you've given it to him so many times on that drive that you had no choice but to give it to him as well. And you not only got to give credit to Schmeezing for doing just a great job today, but offensive line just doing an awesome job of blocking and making holes and getting guys moving and giving him the opportunity to see the hole and run through it. Now Minster went for two out of this 
field goal formation one time. If they were to do so and convert, it would get to the 30-point lead. And instead, they'll kick the extra point. It's up and good from Steffi to make it 43-14. Minster with the advantage over Fort Recovery here in the fourth quarter on WOSM. The scoreboard tonight presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics as the Minster Wildcats have a 43-14 lead over the Fort Recovery Indians on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Not only is the Minster Wildcat warm, Johnny's got some moves down there too. That's <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he, he, you know, going into this game, we had great 60 degree weather and it was nice to be down there pre-game, but like you said, Garrett, I think it's cooled down a little bit. And, that uh, suit might be the best place to be right now in this no. stadium. Once the sun goes down, it gets a little chilly around here as the kickoff is sent away deep. Atchison, another return for the Fort Recovery Indians. Atchison up the middle of the field, out to the 40-yard line. And Atchison, who's not, you know, uh, uh, listed as a returner, who's just one of those upbacks, has got the football five or six times on those kick returns and has done a nice job returning them. Yeah, he has, and, and they're trying to keep it away from uh, their, their normal returners. and. He's had quite a few kickoff returns tonight, but he's done a good job of uh, protecting the football. Typically, that's the concern when those guys that aren't used to returning the football, that can you take care of it? Mm -hmm. He's done a really good job of uh, doing that. So with 9.57 to go in the fourth quarter, Rammel is back in the gun. Rammel lets it fly to Holman. As Holman spins out of a tackle out to the 47-yard line. Gain of seven. And that's one thing we really haven't seen Fort Recovery do a lot tonight was their screen game. I mean, we've seen them uh, try to try to throw to all, all different levels of the field um, and then try to establish a run game, but they really haven't uh, had much of a screen game, so it's kind of nice to see them try to do that at this point. Got an injured Wildcat down on the field. It's We'll step aside, 10 5 to go, 42-43-14 to score here on WOSN. Will Kanapke, the injured Minster Wildcat, up off his own power, and Will Kanapke plays for Minster, so he's got to be a sophomore, John, and he is. <laughs> uh, but he'll uh, get off, to the f off the field under his own power as Ethan Hartnagel, a sophomore running back for Fort Recovery, has the carry. And I think Fort Recovery... You know, this game is, is probably out of reach at this point as far as coming back and, and winning. But but what Fort Recovery has done is they've, they've kind of done some things that have given them momentum and established a future, something to build on. Mm -hmm. They haven't panicked. They haven't started, you know, running trick plays and all kinds of stuff. That they've, they've really tried to come out and command the line of scrimmage. Under nine minutes to go. Ramble rolling to his left. Well, turn his shoulders and fire and connects with Guggenbiller. He shoved out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Pitch and catch there in Minster territory. Reese Guggenbiller ran a really nice route. He, he ran it really hard at first. It looked like it was going to be a deep route, and then he shut it down. And uh, Kale Remble just did a really good job of uh, putting that ball uh, nice and neat right where he needed to be and um, makes it a nice gain. So into Minster territory at the 31-yard line here with 8.45 to go in the fourth quarter. Rammel in the gun. Hartnagel to his left. Rammel now steps up in the pocket and will tuck it and run. To the 30, try to get to the 25 before he's picked up and driven backwards. It's kind of an interesting route concept. The two outside guys went deep and the two inside guys kind of uh, went short. And Kale Rammel, he didn't really uh, take much time to, to look at the defenders. It, I'm not saying that it was a called run, but it it looked like he was going to look at one guy, and if it wasn't there, he was going to take off and, and try to get yards. Connor Garrett in on the stop for Minster. First time we've called his name tonight, the senior linebacker. He'll bring up second and six. For Fort Recovery, the 27-yard line. Rammel, the handoff to Hartnagel, looking for some room. Spun down to the 25-yard line. Brady Wolf, the tackle for Minster. But it's more positive yardage there for Ethan Hartnagel. Yeah, and Brady Wolf did a really good job of, of coming down on the backside. And, you know, th that might be something that Minster looks at defensively to, to stop this run because Ethan Hartnagel, he's, he's really had a great second half. I mean, he had a good first half, but he's had a great second half. And, you know, defensively, might just have to 
uh, tighten up here a bit so that they can keep Fort Recovery out of the end zone. Third and five for the Indians. Greasy behind Harden, or behind Ramel, excuse me. Greasy the carry. Has to get to the 22 yard line. Very close to the first down. Might be a yard shy, though. That's something that we haven't seen much of tonight, Garrett, as a fourth and short. You know, those are those are fun. And so uh, we're going to get one finally now um, in the fourth quarter. But, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting uh, call here with the with the Hartnagel running the ball so well. I mean, it's kind of the obvious choice, but at the same time, it's the obvious choice. <laughs> no, absolutely. And these are the ones that, uh, you know, are one in the weight room. And we'll see what the Indians draw up here on fourth and short. Elian off to Greasy. He's got the first down and more. Very close to the 15-yard line before he's cut down in the open field by Chase Kaus. Interesting play call. They run a tag scheme, which is a counter scheme, which takes time to develop. So, um, you know, Minster kind of playing. I, I wouldn't say that they're... They're not playing on the, the back of their heels, but they're also not, you know, coming off the ball like they were maybe early on. And so uh, that allowed that play to develop and allowed the Indians to get the first down. So 43-14 with six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Indians putting together a drive. Ramel looking to throw. Has time. Will fire inside the five-yard line to Guggenbiller, and he's in the end zone. A 17-yard touchdown from Kale Ramel to Reese Guggenbiller. Puts another touchdown on the board for the Indians. Same play they ran about three plays ago where Guggenbiller runs that outside route. He shuts it down and then drops to the outside. And this time, not only does he make the catch, but he breaks a tackle and gets in the end zone. Really nice route by uh, Reese Guggenbiller. Guggenbiller, a junior, is third receiving touchdown of the season. And the third touchdown pass of the night there from Cale Rammel. Might as well go for two, down 43-20 with 5.51 to go. Rammel now will lob into the end zone, and Guggenbiller's got another reception, that one for two points to make it 43-22. Same two-point conversion, Garrett, that they ran the first time. Same exact play, and it was open. The same exact uh, time as it was the first time as well. Well, these two teams played in week four. It was 41-21. <laughs> now it's 43-22 <laughs> here in week 11 on WOSN. <laughs> Scoreboard tonight presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. It's the Fort Recovery Indians from Mercer County. Have the football teed up as Bo 10. I'm not sure if there's a... More obvious sign, and we're going to try to onside kick it than that. <laughs> but he'll give the old hop right into the hands of Schmiesing at the 50-yard line. Yeah, they played the hands team perfectly there. Minster did. And, uh, nice job by Fort Recovery to, to give it a, uh, an onside kick. It's a good time to do that, especially being down this late in the game. Well, and really, you know, at this point, you're down 43-22. You spent all year practicing your onside kicks. You spent all year practicing your reverse passes. It, 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 you might as well go out there and, and throw it around, have a little fun. Yeah, have a little fun. You know, I, and you hate to you hate to say this, but um, if you're for recovery, I hate to say that you're probably thinking what if. Because what they've done here in the second half with the running game yeah. and slowing the clock down, I mean, they, they've outplayed Minster in the second half. So you hate to say what if, because I think if this, you know, they could have done that in the first half, this would be a different uh, ball game. Steffi with Schmeezing behind him. We'll hand it off, Schmeezing to carry. Hit at the line, a gain of two for Schmeezing on first down. And I think if you're Minster at this point, you're grinding out yards, but you're trying to grind out this clock. Um, you, don't, you definitely don't want to get anybody hurt at this point. You know, you're looking yeah. at week, you know, next week's game. Um, you know, you got, you got guys that you want to make sure are healthy. We've seen a couple guys go off the field already kind of limping, but nothing major. So I think you want to you eat up as much clock as you can, but you want to end this on a positive note too. Looks like the Wildcats will move on to play Mechanicsburg, who had a hearty lead over Lachlan in the first half, where Mechanicsburg and Minster 
played a barn burner of a playoff game back in, I think, 2014, where it was 42-41, where Minster ended up, you know, winning in overtime and going on to win the state championship that year. So a uh, rematch there with the Mechanicsburg Indians probably on tap for Minster. Yeah, and Mechanicsburg, been able to face them several times in, in my career as well, and they're a well-coached team, and they're always tough. They, they have about 25 guys on the team, and all 25 are really good. So, you know, if Minster can get out of here with the win tonight, they're going to have a big test next week. Another carry by Schmiesing there. Brings up third and one with four and a half to go in tonight's ball game. As Steffi will be in the gun, this time with Bergman behind him. And they'll hand off to Bergman. He's right at the first down, Sticks. And I believe he's got Well, and that's just a great job of uh, falling forward. I mean, you can see that there was a, a great defensive play there by Fort Recovery coming down and closing that gap. But uh, at the end of the uh, the play, you can see that the, he fell forward and got the first down and giving him a new set of downs, and more importantly, keeping that clock moving. So the ball spotted right at the 40-yard line as Rogan Steffi directs the offense. As the play clock continues to tick with 10 seconds remaining. Wildcats, I believe, broke the huddle with 12 guys. <laughs> and I believe the officials are, and I won't tell anybody if you won't mow, as we get to the 31-yard line there on another carry by Connor Schmeezing. Yeah, Connor Schmeezing's done a great job, and they're really getting the yards now and, and running the clock. But I agree, I think that that could easily have been called. But <laughs> this late in the game, Garrett, you know, yep. why call it, nope. right? And I, at this point, John, I don't, I don't know if the athletic training staff is getting an ice bath ready for Connor Schmeezing, but he's he's toted the rock an awful lot here, especially in the second half. Yeah, he's he's been the workhorse definitely, and you know we've we've talked so much about uh, Brogan Steffi and all the things that he can do. I think that this is an, another element. Then you know, if you're Mechanicsburg looking at the film, you cannot just focus on Steffi now. You've got to you got to look at uh, Connor Schmeezing. Schmeezing another carry, that time met in the hole by Jose Martinez, the junior defensive tackle, slings Schmeezing to the turf. Yeah, Jose Martinez, is he's got a he's got a nice frame on him, 5'9", 255, yep. and staying low, and Millie making a good uh, play there, and, and not only doing that, but the, the losing yardage as well. Yeah, holds on, and then brings Schmeezing, who's been pretty slippery to the turf as the Indians will call timeout, trailing 43-22 with 2.30 to go in this fourth quarter as... Mechanicsburg victorious over Lachlan. They just announced here at Min Minster. So the Wildcats will go on a road to Mechanicsburg next week to move on into these OHSAA state playoffs that have expanded from eight teams a few years ago to 16. As we take a look here at Minster Memorial Stadium, the final time the seniors will get the chance to play here at Minster Memorial Field. And, uh, a nice job by Minster to bounce back this year after having a tough season a year ago. You know, the one win came against a, a non-OHSAA opponent this year, 6-4, and four, the sixth seed in the playoffs, going to win their first-round game. It's been a nice job by Seth Whiting and his crew. And by the way, Seth Whiting, a, a busy week for Seth Whiting. Uh, wife gave birth to a child this week, so he's he's been <laughs> trying to prepare for a playoff game, has a new, ch has a new son. Uh, it's been, been quite the week here for Seth Whiting. Yeah, I want to wish them congratulations, and I'm sure that uh, he won't get any sleep tonight anyway, so he might as well do the feedings and the, yep. the changings and all that kind of stuff, getting prepared for uh, next week's game. Schmeezing down to the 21-yard line, and I'll move another chain, n another chain movement there for Minster. You see Schmeezing on the sideline there. So you take a look at the replay. Just bounces it outside quickly. Able to turn that corner awful quick as the sophomore. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Garrett, you know, them bouncing back from a tough season. And, you know, not only bouncing back from a tough season, you know, they, they came off a coaching change in a yeah. tough season. And that's that, that, that's just very tough. But these, this uh, sophomore class, not, well, not only a sophomore class, but really a lot of credit to the senior class because they've been resilient enough to stick with it and get in uh, to believe in Coach Whiting's system and stick with it. And it's uh, paying its uh, dividends right now. The handoff to Bergman. Up ahead, inside the red zone to the 18-yard line as Justin Bergman gets another carry. Bergman, a 5'10 junior, and two rushing touchdowns coming into tonight. As Fort Recovery will take another timeout. We'll take a look 
at the bracket here in Division 7, Region 28 after that instant replay where you see Minster's going to move on to play Mechanicsburg, Fort Lormie, victorious over St. Henry as uh, the Redskins put up a, I guess the St. Henry Redskins put up a, a fight uh, there in the first half, but Fort Lormie pulls away and then they'll play Southeastern Charleston some, something, Char Charles, New Charleston <laughs> Southeastern I believe is their name, but they'll have a decent trip to Fort Lormie next Friday night. Yeah, and this is, you know, we talked about earlier, but this is an interesting bracket. Region 28's got some some really good teams, and uh, Fort, you know, Fort Lormie is a team to watch. But this Mechanicsburg Minster game is going to be the, a game that I, I find very interesting um, because Mechanicsburg is always very good. Um, they they're always winning their league, and they're always uh, a, a very highly ranked. But the thing about Minster is, is they play in the MAC. And, and that's just the, the kind of the, the thing that you can't calculate in. These, you know, their record might be seven and four, but when your losses are to Marion Local and Coldwater and, you For know. Sales. Exactly. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, the, you can't really look at that record and say, well, they've lost four games. We should be better than them. 90 seconds to go in his first fourth quarter as Bergman takes another handoff from Steffi into the arms of Reese Wendell. Freshman linebacker with a stop. And one more timeout called there by the Fort Recovery Indians. Get a look at the replay here. Yeah, and that's just a, a good job of uh, staying in bounds and falling forward and uh, pr mainly protecting the football at this point. You don't want to do anything that's going to cost your team and, and create a turnover. And you've got this uh, victory close, so let's uh, let's stay on the ride and, and get it. Take a look at tomorrow's schedule here on WSN. you got college football live between Adrian and Albion up in Michigan. Liberty Benton and Archbold in a playoff matchup. Another 9-8 matchup, Pandora Gilboa on the road at Upper Scioto Valley. And then next week on WOSN, you see Wasion and Van Wert, as well as Ottawa Glandorf Miller City in the district finals, and Kaleida Ottoville in boys soccer in the district final as well. And then you got regional soccer semifinals in Wapak. You got boys regional soccer semis. We're deep into the tournament trail here on WOSN. So Steffi goes back in the shotgun. Bergman behind him. Leading by 21. Steffi, play action, firing, throws it right into the breadbasket of Devin Webker for the score. A 15-yard touchdown pass from Brogan Steffi to Devin Webker. Extends the lead for the Wildcats. Well, in, in, in this situation, you can say, why are they throwing the ball with that amount of time? But here's the thing, Fort Recovery just took three timeouts. I was going to say, you're taking timeouts. You're taking timeouts, so I give Minster credit for, you know, being aggressive there and going after it and trying to score because, you know, there's no time, there's a little time left on the clock and, and they're going to be aggressive and they're going to try to get the ball into the hands of their players. So the 15-yard strike from Steffi to Webker. Steffi on for the extra point. Up high, arching kick is good. Makes it 49-22, and that is the high score of the season for the Minster Wildcats, as you see there on the scoreboard on WOSN. Scoreboard tonight presented by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. That's the scoreboard. Says 50-22 between Minster and Fort Recovery. They'll kick it away. That one deep. Into the hands of Guggenbiller. Reese Guggenbiller will roll out to the 32-yard line, which is still over a minute to go. So Minster going to move to 7-4 on the season. Fort Recovery will see their season end at 3-8 and eight in this battle between Mac Foes in the first round of the playoffs. And, it, you know, in this in this uh, season, it's, it's fun to see these Mac teams, you know, get out and, and play each other and all that, but I, I think I'm all I'm always excited as a fan to see how the Mac plays against other teams and mm -hmm. from other leagues, especially when you start to get into the second, third, and fourth round of the playoffs. There's always those those teams that you know have three to four losses that are going against one seeds and, and they win, you know, and, and and normally commanding you know style. So I think that's what I'm excited for here in the next couple of weeks to see these Mac teams match up against teams from other leagues. So Kale Rammel in the shotgun is. Chase Kaiser, the senior, going to line up at running back behind him as Kaiser gets the handoff. 
Kaiser up the middle of the field out to the 40, or excuse me, the 38 yard line. I beg your pardon. And that's very close to a first down carry there for Chase Kaiser. Yeah, and I think at this point you're starting to see some uh, some clean jerseys come into the game, Garrett, especially yeah. on the Minster side, and some young guys getting the thrill of playing playoff football on their uh, home field. So under a minute to go. Kaiser will get another carry. Running hard, has the first down and more. Kaiser out into the 40-yard line before he's tugged to the turf. That was a really nice run. I mean, he kept his head down and he kept moving. Yeah. The feet kept going and knees kept going. And, you know, Minster's trying to run some new guys in. But, hey, you know what? This is his uh, opportunity to get some time to play, and he's going to take advantage of it. Yeah, Kaiser a 5'10 senior, so the final chance for him to play a little varsity football here is gets a couple of carries and see if they want to end it to him a third time. Kaiser gives it again. Kaiser off left tackle to the 33-yard line, so a gain of seven there, and that will do it. Kaiser, three carries to close out his high school football career, but the Minster Wildcats victorious tonight, 50-22 to over Fort Recovery. We'll head down to the field and chat with Seth Whiting, the victorious Minster head coach, when we return here on WOSN. Back here at Minster, wrapping up a 50-22 first-round playoff victory for the Wildcats. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined with Minster head coach Seth Whiting. And, Seth, uh, uh, you didn't play Connor Schmeezing a whole lot of running back throughout the year. You did tonight, and it seemed like it went pretty well for you. Yeah, he, he played outstanding. Um, you know, he didn't have a ton of carries this year, maybe 20 or so. Uh, but we just we felt like it was time to make a little bit of an adjustment. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's hats off to the guys up front. Our fullbacks, tight ends, and offensive linemen played excellent tonight. You know, the times where we rotated and, and uh, Justin went in at tailback, Justin was ripping off seven, eight-yard runs too. So, uh, you know, both those tailbacks played really well. But it's Connor had a heck of a game. You get to the, the playoffs, a lot of, you know, teams and coaches will talk about, you know, relying on their seniors. The sophomore class for you guys really stood out tonight. You got a couple of, um, you know, Niemeyer got three interceptions. The last one uh, was a circus catch that you're not going to see many guys make, let alone a sophomore. But what can you say about your young guys who, who played a big role for you tonight? Uh, our young guys have been excellent. That was, you know, our big concern when I took the program last year was uh, our seniors and, and junior numbers were low last year, uh, and we knew coming in we had a small senior class, you know, again this year with seven of them. But those seven seniors, they whatever their role is in the program, regardless what it may be, those guys lead uh, by example every day. The way they work in practice, the way they communicate with their teammates, the way they take charge of, of what their role is is really impressive. So, you know, our young guys – Obviously, go out and make some plays. You know, our, our quarter, Steph, he's really, really good. And, you know, Connor Schmeezing and James E. Meyer and, and a lot of those other guys. But those seniors, Devin Webker and Brady Wolf and um, Chase Kaus and, oh, gosh, who else am I missing there? Um, all those, those three guys on offense, you know, a lot for us. And then Nick Winter is a senior leading our offensive line. And then Andy Peppelman and Connor Garrett and uh, Matt Harmeyer jumping in and controlling our special teams. You know, all seven of those seniors really do well for us. Everybody wants to be playing their best football at this time of the year. Do you think you're, you're peaking at the right time? Uh, I, I think we have a long way to go to peak because, with like you said, with those younger guys, we still make young mistakes. There were some young mistakes tonight, uh, but we're, we're getting better every week, and that's what we want. Well, congratulations on the win. Congratulations on the new member of the family, and uh, <laughs> uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. That's Seth Whiting and joining us here at Minster as the, the Wildcats move on with a 50-22 to 22 victory here at Minster. And now welcome John Zerby back into the, the picture here as the Wildcats, John, move on. And uh, we talk about uh, the, the, the victory here. What stood out most to you tonight from Minster? Yeah, just what Coach said, just the, the seniors leading the way and just really, uh, I think, you know, they kind of probably go unnoticed a lot because you talk so much about that sophomore group, but uh, really doing a great job of being leaders on the field and allowing those sophomores uh, to, to step up and, and, and really yeah. come through tonight in a playoff situation. And then kind of the surprise, Connor Schmeezing just going in there and really doing a great job. And, and our coach probably sees him every day, so it's not a surprise to him. But, you know, <laughs> to the rest of us, that's a nice surprise. And really, I think giving them some momentum going into next week's game with Mechanicsburg. So it's time to name our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. And, John, I think we're, we're in agreement on who that is. Yeah, absolutely. Connor Schmeezing did a great job and we just uh, you know uh, his impressive the way he ran the ball and the, the, the not only running the ball but just uh, kind of putting the load on his shoulders in the second half and and really propelling Minster to a, a great playoff win. So for more of our WOSN Stolly Hustle Award winners check out the WOSN YouTube page where you'll see the highlights from Connor Schmeezing's effort tonight. 
50-22 the final. Minster moving on to the second round of the Division 7 Region 28 playoffs for our fantastic WOSN crew and John Zerby. I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from Minster here on WOSN.